Hello everybody, my name is Dr. Ominde. I discuss the histology, histology of the um, central nervous system. Now we'll discuss the cells, the histology of the spinal cord, the brainstem, cerebrum, and the cerebellum. So we have different cells in the CNS. The astrocytes are of two types, the fibrous astrocytes that are in white matter. And these usually have few straight cytoplasmic processes. Then we have protoplasmic astrocytes. These ones are found in the gray matter and they are highly branched processes. Astrocytes contain gliofibrillary uh, acidic protein as their intermediate filament. So we have fibrous and protoplasmic in white matter and gray matter respectively. So astrocytes help to form the blood-brain barrier. What are the components of blood-brain barrier? We have three major components. We have um, food processes of astrocytes, then capillary endothelial cells held together by their junction of complexes. And these endothelial cells are lying on the capillary basement membrane. So those are the three components of blood-brain barrier. What are the functions of blood-brain barrier? It's able to provide the neuron with a constant biochemical and metabolic environment. Then it also helps to protect against endogenous and exogenous toxins and microbes, infectious. Blood-brain barrier also helps to insulate the neurons from, you remember we have circulating neurotransmitters and hormones, so it helps to insulate the neurons from them. We have what we call circumventricular organs. These are organs that lack blood-brain barrier around them, okay? They lack blood-brain barrier because, um, <clears throat> for example, the uh, organs that are going to produce hormones, we want so that hormones are able to be released effectively, or organs that are responsible to chemicals such as the area postrema, it should be able to detect these chemicals in blood and be able to respond to them. So circumventricular organs are organs that are devoid of blood-brain barrier, and this include the pineal uh, gland, the subphonical organ, subcommissural organ, median eminence, the posterior pituitary or the neurohypophysis, then you have the area postrema and the capillaries of the choroid plexus. We go to the microglial cells. These are members of the monocytic phagocytic system, therefore they are mesodermal in origin, they are amoeboid, and their main role is phagocytosis. So they are highly branched. So these are microglial cells. Then we have oligodendrocytes. These are cells that are able to produce myelin sheath. They wrap their cell membrane around axons of neurons to form myelin sheath in the CNS. And myelin is just to insulate so that you don't lose the impulses. Therefore, you increase the rate of transmission of impulses compared to fibers, okay? Then we have ependymal cells that usually line the ventricles of the brain and line the spinal canal of the spinal cord. And these are usually cuboidal or low columnar um, uh, lining cells that lack basement membrane. And on their surface, the luminal surface, they usually have cilia and microvilli and these mainly are for secretory and absorptive purposes. So these are the ependymal cells. So <clears throat> basically, this is the cross-section of the spinal cord. The outer portion is white matter. The inner portion is gray matter. And the gray matter has the dorsal or sensory horn posteriorly, ventral horn, which is usually larger. It's motor anteriorly. And central canal of spinal cord there. Then the white matter at the front it has a fissure, ventral median fissure, and a sulcus posteriorly, dorsal median sulcus. Then you have the roots, motor roots or ventral roots, and posteriorly dorsal root or sensory roots. They join to form a spinal nerve. So basically, this is the cross section of the spinal cord. And so white matter are just made up of tracts, they're just myelinated axons of nerves, while gray matter are neuronal cell bodies. So at the spinal cord, the ventral um, horns have cell bodies of lower motor neurons. Remember, we've said motor neurons are living from the ventral horn. So the cell bodies of the lower motor neurons, the neurons that are going to innervate the muscles are in the ventral horn. Then the cell bodies um, in the dorsal horn are cell bodies of the secondary sensory neurons. Then the laterals I usually contain uh, cell bodies of preganglionic sympathetic <clears throat> nerves. Remember, sympathetic nerves come from T1 to T12 and L1, L2 portions of the spinal cord. So the preganglionic 
um, neurons. Their cell bodies are in the lateral horn at this region, T1, T12, L1, L2. So again, there's more gray matter in the spinal cord at the cervical than the lumbar region because of the enlargement. Remember, we need brachial plexus to the upper limb and lumbosacral to the lower limb. So that's where there is enlargement at those regions. Then the central canal of the spinal cord, of course, lies within the central commissure of the gray matter. Then the white matter, we've said it's made up of myelinated axons that form tracts. So the ones that are carrying sensory information, they are ascending and motor information are descending tracts. So as you're going upwards, the white matter increases. The white matter in the lumbar region is only from lower limb. Then they are joined by fibers from thoracic, joined by fibers as you go up cervical. So cervical region has more white matter. And uh, the white matter, we've said anteriorly, there's a ventral median fissure. And posteriorly, there's a dorsal mid midline sulcus. And we also have ventrolateral and dorsolateral sulcus. And these are the places where uh, dorsal nerve roots exit at the dorsolateral sulcus, while the ventral nerve roots exit at the ventrolateral sulcus. Then we have dorsal columns posteriorly. Okay, these are ascending fibers on the posterior aspect of the spinal cord, and they carry proprioception, vibration, and discriminatory touch to the medulla. So this information in the dorsal columns, these are tracts in the dorsal column of the white matter of the spinal cord. They will carry this information to the nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus, which are in the fasciculus, uh, which are in the posterior part of the um, medulla. Then, so from the cervical region, cervical region has a medial um cervical region of the spinal cord the dorsal column has a medial uh, fasciculus gracilis um, carrying information from the lower limb and a lateral fasciculus cuneatus that's carrying from the upper limb and the upper trunk okay but if you're talking of the lumbar region the dorsal column will only have fasciculus gracilis from the lower limb fasciculus cuneatus only begin in t6 and above so the dorsal column of the spinal cord will be divided into two, fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus, only at the portions of the spinal cord T6 and above. Below T6, we only have fasciculus gracilis carrying from the uh, proprioception, uh, discriminatory touch and vibration from the lower limb. Then the ventrolateral white matter. We are talking about white matter, so that's dorsal white matter. On the ventrolateral white matter, we still have ascending and descending tracts. So we have lateral spinothalamic tract that carries pain and temperature, ventral spinothalamic tract that carries light touch sensation, and spinal cerebellar tract for uh, uh, balance. But we also have corticospinal tracts that are for motor. So at the posterior column, and fasciculus cuneatus, fasciculus gracilis, fasciculus on both sides, sensation, ascending, okay? And they are the fasciculus, uh, sorry, a nuclear gracilis and nucleus cuneatus, respectively. Fasciculus gracilis is carrying information from lower limb upwards. Fasciculus cuneatus is carrying from T6 upwards, okay? Trunk and um, upper limbs. Then we have anterior and posterior spinal cerebellar. This is where they are located. And then you have the um, spinal thalamic tracts that are carrying pain and temperature sensation. So those are the, you need to know the ascending tracts, those ones you must know. Fasciculus gracilis and cuneatus, anterior and posterior spinal cerebellum, and spinal thalamic anterior and uh, ventral and lateral, where lateral is for pain and temperature, while ventral is for light, um, light touch. Okay. So, um, then for the descending um, tracts, so basically you need to be able to, you can be asked in an exam, draw the cross section. So for the, for the descending tracts, they're the ones in red. So there's um, corticospinal tracts, lateral corticospinal, and anterior corticospinal. These are motor. Then there's rubrospinal there, okay, and vestibulospinal. So from vestibular nuclei to the spinal cord, rubrospinal from the red nucleus to the spinal cord, corticospinal are from the cortex to the spinal cord. So these are coming from the brain going downwards to the spinal cord, okay? So then you have tectospinal trapped there from the tectum 
that's from superior and inferior colliculi to the spinal cord. So those are the examples of the descending tract. So you should be able to draw a cross-section of the spinal cord and show at least five ascending tracts and five descending tracts and exactly where they are positioned. So lateral corticospinal is there, anterior corticospinal is there, rubrospinal and tectospinal and vestibulospinal anteriorly. Okay. So then um, the cervical spinal cord. So you have to explain the histology of the spinal cord regionally. So from the cervical region, cervical spinal cord is the largest and the white matter is large and oval in shape. It's the largest because you have more ascending and descending fibers. The ones that are going to all parts of the body, they will pass through um, the cervical region. Then the transverse diameter of the cervical cord is actually larger than the anterior posterior um, diameter. Then we have what you call the posterior columns. So the posterior um, columns are the posterior funiculi. Okay, so that's where you have fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus. So you'll see both of them in the cervical region. So those are the features of cervical spinal cord. Then when you come to the thoracic spinal cord. Above T6, you'll see both fasciculus, gracilis, and cuneatus. But below T6, to T7 to T12, we'll see only fasciculus, gracilis, carrying uh, discriminatory touch, vibration, and proprioception from the lower limb. Then we start seeing the lateral horn in the thoracic region. Remember we said sympathetic preganglionics, their cell bodies are in the lateral horn. And sympathetic is from T1 to T12 and L1, L2. So in this thoracic cord, you see the lateral horn. Then we have what you call the dorsal clax nucleus. So this is a nucleus thoracis, okay? And it's usually at T1 to T12, but very well developed between T10 and L2. The lumbar spinal cord is circular. Remember, the cervical one we said is oval, but the lumbar region is circular. And if you're to compare the white matter in lumbar and cervical, the white matter in cervical is more because all ascending and descending will pass through cervical. And the posterior column in the lumbar, there's only fasciculus gracilis because remember we said fasciculus cuneatus begins from T6 and above. So below T6, there is no fasciculus cuneatus. Then at the sacral region, the spinal cord is small and it has less white matter. So if you're to look at this image, anywhere you see lateral horn is most likely to be thoracic region. Anywhere you see more white matter, it's most likely to be cervical region. Okay, so this A is cervical. There's more white matter than gray matter. Then B is thoracic, the presence of the lateral horn, and the gray matter is very small. Okay, then C is the lumbar region. <clears throat> okay, so the gray matter is more or less like white matter. And if you're to compare cervical and lumbar, which one has more white matter? The cervical. Then look at the posterior column. Cervical has fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus. Thoracic has fasciculus gracilis and cuneatus, but lumbar only has fasciculus gracilis. Okay, then this is the tiny one that's at the um, sacral region. Okay. Then we move to the <coughs> we move to the um, the brainstem. Okay, so we shall explain that um, in the next video.